The story of human evolution used to be a simple, lonely tale of one species living at one period and gradually developing into another. However, since the discovery of the bones of a mysterious and ancient new species of human deep inside a cave in South Africa by fossil hunters, bones of long-lost family members have piled up. Archaeologists have recently revealed how tall that pile has grown. They currently have at least 18 Homo naledi remains, as the species is known. A fairly entire adult skull was discovered in a subterranean chamber 100 meters from the first collection of bones. The bones were found to be between 335,000 and 236,000 years old, much younger than many scientists had predicted. It suggests that this kind of primitive hominid existed at the same time as Homo sapiens, stated lead researcher Lee Berger. What the bones do show is that human evolution was not the simple, linear progression from one species to another that is commonly assumed. It doesn't start with something that looks like a monkey, then something that looks like an ape then something that looks like a person, and then you've got people. It's far more complex than that. Surprisingly, the bones exhibit few evidence of sickness or stress from poor development, implying that Homo naledi was the dominant species in the area at the time. They're the healthiest dead things you've ever seen, Berger added. However, it is remarkable for its blend of ancient and modern traits. It possesses a small brain and curled fingers that are well adapted for climbing, yet its wrists, hands, legs, and feet resemble those of Neanderthals or contemporary humans. If the timing is correct, Homo naledi may have developed in Africa around 2 million years ago, but retained some of its more primitive characteristics even as modern humans evolved. This is extremely young for a creature that has primitive traits present in 2 million year old fossils said Chris Stringer of London's Natural History Museum. Furthermore, Berger speculates that some ancient stone tools unearthed in the region may have been mistakenly assigned to Homo sapiens, due to the age of the bones and their discovery in the rising star cave system on the outskirts of the Cradle of Humankind site near Johannesburg. They could, instead, be the work of Homo naledi. There have never been any stone tools discovered alongside Homo naledi bones but Stringer does not rule out the potential that the species manufactured them. It appears quite plausible that its work is present in the Southern African archaeological record, but is now unattributed, said Stringer. Another mystery highlighted by the remains is how they came to be buried. Berger does not believe the creatures arrived by chance. I believe the discovery adds to the theory that Homo naledi purposefully disposed of its dead, in the deep underground chambers of the Rising Star cave system. He assumes they were also able to control fire in order to accomplish this. Others are less certain. Stringer and many other specialists questioned if Homo naledi, with a brain the size of a gorilla, could exhibit such complex behavior. Perhaps subsequent exploration will discover other entrances or sinkholes that were temporarily open, through which the remains could have been brought by natural or unintentional processes. Stringer speculated. It's impossible to adequately judge Lee Berger's assertions without seeing the complete proof, which appears to be forthcoming. With all due respect to Lee and his teams for a succession of fantastic findings, this is not the way to conduct science or advance scientific discourse on potentially life-changing discoveries, Stringer added. Despite having a brain one-third the size of ours, archaeological evidence reveals that Homo naledi used fires to prepare meals and navigate in the darkness of underground caverns. We have a lot of proof. It's all over the place, adds Lee Berger. Huge charcoal lumps, thousands of charred bones, massive hearths, and baked clay. This discovery, which is still being studied and is contentious, has the potential to change our understanding of the evolution of sophisticated behaviors that were previously assumed to be the sole realm of large brained creatures like modern humans and Neanderthals. Homo naledi was discovered in South Africa's rising star cave system, after two cavers managed to penetrate a previously undiscovered chamber via an extremely narrow channel. Thousands of ancient bones littered the ground. These were classified as a new species, Homo naledi. We now know that Homo naledi stood about 4 foot 8 inches tall and weighed around 80 pounds on average, not too far outside the range of some modern female populations. 
It possessed an odd mix of primitive and modern traits, including ape-like shoulders, a tiny brain just slightly larger than that of a chimp, and teeth more suggestive of something millions of years old, according to Berger. However, dating of its fossil remains revealed that it lived relatively recently, between 230,000 and 330,000 years ago, implying that it might have coexisted with Homo sapiens in southern Africa. But concerns persisted about how Homo naledi navigated the maze of underground tubes at Rising Star, which are completely dark and involve complicated maneuvers through 17 cm wide cracks in the rock. Recently, Berger noticed blackened spots and soot particles on the rock when he entered the chamber and glanced up. The entire chamber's roof is charred and scorched, he says. Concurrently with Berger's observations of the soot, his colleague discovered a tiny hearth containing burned antelope bones in another area of the cave system, followed by a big hearth 15 centimeters below the cave floor. The discovery of antelope bones is intriguing because it implies that they hunted these animals, putting them in direct conflict with large-bodied humans in the vicinity, and we all know how humans react when competing for territory with other humans. Berger also discovered a tower of burnt rocks with an ash and burnt bone base in another region known as the Lezedi Chamber. Many researchers felt it was impossible for such a small-brained hominid to manufacture and use fire within a cave system, thus this is a stunning discovery. Although there is evidence that ancient humans living in what is now Kenya were capable of controlling fire 1.5 million years ago, this ability is often associated with larger-brained Homo erectus. But perhaps more importantly, they give some new insight on this new species. For starters, despite their basic nature, Homo naledi appear to have occupied the same ecological niche as humans and Neanderthals. Archaeologists and anthropologists believe they had a similar diet based on their teeth, which is noteworthy. It's hard to claim it was geographic isolation because there's no limit, no barrier. Professor John Hawke said of how Homo naledi retained its specific characteristics while living so close to other human species. From here to Tanzania, the landscape is the same. We're in a continuous savanna, a woodland-type ecosystem. To coexist in a geographic area throughout time, different hominin populations' ecological niches must be distinguished. If their niches greatly overlap, one of the two species will go, locally, extinct. This competitive exclusion principle is well established in ecology. They don't appear to be in a separate ecological niche. That's strange. It's a problem. We can't point to them and say, they coexisted because they used resources differently, anthropologist John Hawke speculated. In fact, the human-sized teeth of Homo naledi most likely represented a diet similar to that of modern people. Furthermore, Homo naledi had limb proportions similar to ours, and there is no reason to believe it could not have used stone tools. Homo naledi appears to have utilized the cave in novel ways, with body disposal in one place and cookery in nearby spaces. The ability to manufacture and use fire explains how Homo naledi traveled so deeply into dangerous locations as well as how they may have taken their dead kin into such spaces, which would have been impossible without light. It also suggests the emergence of a complex Homo naledi culture, according to Lee Berger. The burned remains are still being dated, therefore the choice to announce the fire discovery before the formal scientific examination has become highly contentious. The discovery that Homo naledi may have been able to use fire, on the other hand, may provide insight into how they treated their deceased and their social organization. However, F. Homo naledi was demonstrated to have mastered fire, and exploited it to obtain access to the most remote sections of the rising star cave system, it could have significant consequences for the interpretation of Homo naledi funeral customs. Controlling an artificial light source provides for the organization of actions in location and time, and, in the case of funeral practices, allows for the participation of multiple members of the group in collaborative and shared actions, according to Lee Berger. For Berger, the finding of fire use has even more revolutionary implications. If these small-brained creatures, with many rudimentary traits, were capable of the complex cognition required to produce and regulate fire, 
we'd be witnessing the emergence of a cultural pathway and behavior that we thought was reserved for Homo sapiens, Denisovans and Neanderthals, Berger also stated. Indeed, it was becoming evident that the new species was unlike anything else uncovered by paleoanthropologists. Although sections of its skeleton resembled modern human anatomy, it had some glaringly primitive traits, such as a brain case that was only slightly larger than that of a chimp. This is remarkably young for a creature that still exhibits rudimentary traits present in two million year old fossils, such as tiny brain size, curled fingers, and shoulder, trunk, and hip joint structure. What does it indicate if the fossils are 200,000 to 300,000 years old? At least 7 million years ago, our first hominid forefathers existed. The first creature that resembled modern humans arose between 2 and 3 million years ago. What's more our own species, Homo sapiens, developed some 200,000 years ago. So, if Homo nalidi lived 300,000 to 200,000 years ago, that's quite a remarkable implication. It suggests that a species of human with some unexpectedly rudimentary characteristics, including a tiny skull and brain, persisted into the recent past. Homo nalidi could have even met early members of our species. One could even speculate that we contributed to its extinction. Is fossil age even useful in determining where Homo nalidi falls in the human evolutionary tree? It most likely depends on who you ask. Based only on its odd physique, Homo nalidi appears to belong somewhere around the absolute bottom of the real human family tree, an idea supported by several fossil researchers. Indeed, we do know that the first early humans arose over two million years ago. Some scholars may claim that because Homo nalidi is just 300,000 years old, it cannot be the ancestor of our species. It's far too young. Perhaps it evolved primitive-looking traits from a modern-looking predecessor. But it is still entirely feasible that Homo nalidi belongs somewhere towards the bottom of our human evolutionary tree. The primitive species could have evolved as one of the earliest real humans more than two million years ago, and then persisted unmodified for hundreds of thousands of years. It could be close to the start of the genus Homo, implying that this is a remnant species with many rudimentary features from a much earlier time. Berger has previously discussed this idea. He believes Homo nalidi is a human equivalent of the coelacanth, a primordial fish with ancestors that first arose 400 million years ago and is still found in oceans today. But is there any precedent in the human fossil record for that idea? Yes. Another remarkable discovery was made over a decade ago by researchers working on the opposite side of the planet. In Indonesia, they discovered bones of another ancient human species with a tiny chimp-sized cranium that existed, only 50,000 years ago. It is named Homo floresiensis, yet it is best known by its nickname, the Hobbit. For years, scientists have debated the position of Homo floresiensis in the human family tree. One research paper, rekindled the hypothesis that Homo floresiensis might be traced back to a very early type of human known as Homo habilis which lived in Africa more than 2 million years ago. The theory is that some 2 million years ago, a population of Homo habilis left Africa and progressively spread throughout Asia, eventually reaching Indonesia. If this theory is valid, Homo floresiensis, despite its young age, falls on one of the lowest branches of the true human family tree, because it evolved directly from the primitive Homo habilis. In other words, Species of evolutionary primitive humans may be able to persist for hundreds of thousands of years in specific circumstances. There are apparent parallels with Homo floresiensis late survival in Indonesia, but in that case, island isolation probably accounts for its longevity. How could a similarly weird and small brained species survive in southern Africa, supposedly among more advanced humans? What became of Homo nalidi in the end? There are currently no answers to this compelling question. But there is at least one plausible possibility if the fossils are only 300,000 to 200,000 years old. If early Homo sapiens arrived in southern Africa soon after, they could have helped in the extinction of Homo nalidi. There is precedent for this as well. Homo sapiens left Africa and progressively migrated across Eurasia, according to the out-of-Africa theory. 
Homo sapiens arrived in areas already inhabited by more primitive humans, such as the Neanderthals and Denisovans. The indigenous species of ancient humans vanished after a few thousand years of Homo sapiens' arrival in these new places, evidently outcompeted. This destiny appears to have befallen even the Flores hobbit, Homo floresiensis. According to the most current evidence, it became extinct 50,000 years ago, around the time that Homo sapiens arrived in this part of Indonesia. Thus, Homo nalidi may have the regrettable distinction of being the first ancient human species to be driven extinct by the expansion of our species. However, this theory is all supposition and speculation at this time, 